Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nilo. So this is my series here on YouTube for guides, tutorials, and how to for Factorio to make you a better engineer. In this episode, we'll be making science to get to the first rocket launch. The designs we're building are modeled for 90 signs per minute or 1.5 per second. All of the designs I'm presenting will be made at ratio, if at all possible. Each masterclass episode starts with a workshop session over on Twitch. This usually happens on Mondays at twitch.tv slash Nilos. You're very welcome to drop by. During these workshops, we discuss ideas and improve on designs so that they are ready for presenting in these masterclass videos. If you like the video, hit the like button. It actually helps a lot in terms of visibility for my videos, so I appreciate it. Hit the comment section below if you have feedback or ideas for upcoming episodes. You're also very welcome to join our Discord with more than 5,000 members discussing the games we play here on the channel. If you're only interested in a single science build, then check the pinned comment below with timestamps to specific builds so you can skip ahead. Blueprints are available in comment section below and safe games are available to Patreon supporters. Let's take a look at the first science build. This is the automation and logistics science or more popularly red and green science. Before diving into the actual builds, let me just highlight some of the features of the blueprints I'm providing. The blueprints include combinators at the beginning of each line. You can see here that there's an indicator here for what item goes on the line because when you stamp down the blueprint, it will not have items on the line. So it's good to be able to see what goes in on each line. The value in the combinators indicate how many items are requested per minute. So here it says 90 copper per minute. And that just out of reference, a full yellow belt is 900 per minute. So this is one tenth of a belt, while this one is more than half a belt that's being consumed. Yellow belt, of course. The second combinator of the build, this one, is available for all of them and highlights the entirety of what is going on in this split build. So if you click on it, it highlights the output materials for the actual science builds and the components here. And then the subcomponents are also listed here. And that way, when it's summarized, the stuff that is just intermediate products, such as belts and inserters, are, are cancelled out. That information will be available for all builds. You will notice that I'm using yellow belts for this, as well as using yellow inserters, where available and wooden power holes. This is one of the first builds, so I'm using the tech that you have available at this moment in time. However, do note that I must use blue inserters for some parts of the build. Things that are producing every half second must have blue inserters to keep up. Now the tech that you are using at this point is what you have built in the jumpstart base and the main bus. So if you are unfamiliar with where this build should start, take a look at my previous episodes of the Factorio Masterclass, the jumpstart base to get the very first build done and the main bus because this is built as a branch off of the main bus. The actual build for red and green science is pretty simple. Let's look at the red science. The red signs only need copper plates and iron gears. It is producing at five second build. With a five second build, you need with a five second build, you need 10 assemblers in order to deliver 1.5 per second. The reason why it's 1.5 and not two is because the crafting speed of assembly machines Mark II is 0.75. Green science is only slightly more complex with inserters and transport belts required. This has a six second craft time, so I need 12 assemblers to get a two per second. That will be 1.5 per second because of the crafting speed of the assemblers Mark II. One thing to note is that you will need two blue inserters to keep one assembling machine Mark II busy with making gears. However, for the belts, we only need one inserter because each belt is producing two belts per craft. Moving on to the military science, we can see that this is slightly more complicated and there are a few kinks and quirks to this that I'd like to emphasize. Each of these assemblers is producing two military signs per 10 seconds. So with 10 assemblers, we will producing two per second and then modified by the crafting speed, that means 1.5 per second or 90 per minute. This build is actually slightly overbuilt. It is overbuilt with regards to the ammo and this is done for a couple of different reasons. In order to keep 10 assemblers working, we would need one piercing ammo per second, technically 0.5 per second because of crafting speed. And that would require three assembling machines making 
piercing rounds. However, in most bases, unless you're playing on peaceful mode or without biters entirely, you will need more ammo than you can have. Therefore, I have built an overflow such that grenades and piercing ammo will, when it's overflow from the belt, will flow into some boxes here that I've set 400 and I've set 200. You can set these values as you like. This gives you the opportunity so that when you are not researching military science, you will stockpile items that you can use for clearing biters or trees. One thing I will highlight about the military science is that it's for the time that it's built, it is very resource intensive. You can see the number here. This is half a yellow belt. This is half a yellow belt. This is half, this is more than half a yellow belt. This is half a yellow belt and then also some steel. All in all, this is consuming quite a few materials. So keep in mind how often you want to have the science running. And if you build the buffers too big, then you're also spending a lot of your materials on building building for buffers. Moving on to blue science, we, can, we have some choices to make in terms of how to make the design. What I have chosen is to assume that red circuits and sulfur is produced somewhere else and brought in here. For example, through the main bus. The reason for this decision is that Red circuits are used for so many other things, so you definitely want a dedicated location for that. Sulfur is used for a few things, but it's an oil product that somehow belongs more along with oil production rather than tagged onto a blue science production. You will notice in this build that I have quite a lot of assemblers. This is necessary because the cycle time is 24 seconds, so I need 24 assemblers, each producing two science packs in order to get our desired 90 per minute or 1.5 per second. The design here is going for as rectangular as possible. And this is possible because you need 20 engine assemblers to match up with 24 blue science assemblers. The way that I have designed both the engines and the blue science is a similar pattern that I'm using quite frequently. It is used when I have two belts inbound and one belt outbound, and for, for example, engines or blue science. Here we have on either side, we have underground going over and under and then alternating so that each of these assemblers can grab from the one furthest away, grab the one closest and then output on the middle belt. It's exactly the same once you recognize this pattern. It's something you can use for a lot of different locations. We are not exporting the engines out to the bus because they don't belong on the bus. We are melting them exactly at scale for the size we need for our blue signs. With the blue signs built, you're really taking a big step into the mid game and it's time to look at the more late game techs. Before we dive into the late game tech, I would like to thank the Patreon supporters who choose to support the channel. There are no sponsors on my videos, which means this is a 100% community funded channel. If you want to support the channel and what I do here, then please consider supporting on Patreon. It means the world to me. Thank you very much. Let's take a look at utility science or yellow science as it is also called. I prefer to build the utility science before pr the production science because I feel that this is more, more useful to get up and running faster. The utility science build unlocks very important tech such as power armor to make your movement and base building easier, advanced military tech and artillery. Furthermore, the majority of this build is actually what you need in order to build robots. So build this one immediately after completing. The main part of this build is actually the build you will need for building robots. All of this part highlighted is used for robots. So build this immediately after completing the blue science, and then you can use it for building robots that you will undoubtedly need in your base. Once you have the low density structures and the blue circuits, then you can add the line and make this into the utility science build. Because I'm building this before I build production science, I am keeping this with red belts and blue assemblers because these are the techs you have available at the current moment. And also it's not necessary to build to use blue belts for any of this. There is a slight mismatch in this build because robot frames are running on a 20 second cycle while utility science is running on a 21 second cycle. However, for the purpose of this build, I am assuming a one to one match so that they can do direct insertion. Even after building the yellow science, you will also need this still for additional robots and additional electric engines. You will need a couple of electric engines for your exoskeletons and for your rocket silo. So use this as well for that. The way I propose that you can use this build for continuous production of robots and electric engines is simply by extending it. You copy some part of it and then extend it further out because everything is built modular 
That means it extends fully. These outputs can now be put into boxes or on a separate belt in order to make your construction and logistics robots as you like. Also, you can set the output for one of these boxes, one of these electric engine builds to output into a box, set the constraint of the box to four tiles. That will give you 200 electric engines built over a long time, but that will be what you needed for the rocket silo. So you don't have to wait for it when you want to build the rocket silo. As I mentioned, this build is also designed. Oh. As mentioned, this build is using blue assemblers. However, when you unlock the yellow assemblers, the Mark III assemblers, I would highly recommend upgrading this one immediately. The reason for upgrading is not only because they're faster and apparently louder, but this allows you to put in additional modules into all of these builds. Doing this will reduce the speed you're working. However, it will also decrease the amount of resources being used because you are producing, you get now 12% productivity. Since these are very expensive materials, I think it's worth it to use some productivity modules here. Doing this will reduce your throughput. It'll reduce the crafting speed by 25%, but increase the productivity by 12%. I think this is a good choice to do and eventually when you get better modules I would highly recommend upgrading them to better modules. With better modules they are now slightly faster but also have 30% productivity. This makes a big difference. Whether you also want to do this for your robot frames depends upon whether you have enough modules and enough power to keep it going. And now on to the production or purple science. This is, in my opinion, by far the worst one to build, but it does unlock some very important tech such as the Coverex refinement process, assembler Mark III and beacons. So you definitely need want it and you definitely want it faster. Whether you do this one or the utility science first is really up to you, but you need to do both. Since this tech is unlocking assemblers Mark III, you will need to build this with blue assemblers. Now, the thing that I find really ironic about production science is that none of the components needed for production science can be productivity modules. That may not be a big issue right as you build it, but as you progress further into the game, this becomes a very expensive build. Production science is a very expensive build, particularly when it comes to the red circuits. This is, it might not look like much, it's one third of a yellow belt, but it, it does add up and this will be consuming a lot of your feeble red circuit production at this moment in time. However, steel will be consumed in vast quantities here. This is both needed for the electric furnaces as well as for the rails and they're needed in very high quantities. So by the time you start working on production science, you will absolutely without a doubt need to scale up your steel production. So keep that in mind. Likewise, another thing to keep wind of is that you actually need a bit of stone as well. This build is also a good place to produce production modules Mark 1 and you can be able, to, you can set up a little assembler to grab them from the belt so you have them available for various builds. In similar fashion to the utility science, this is a prime candidate to upgrade to yellow assemblers as soon as possible. The reason to upgrade to yellow assemblers is of course that you get a nice speed boost from going from 0.75 to, to 1.25 crafting speed However, the main bonus is the fact that you can now add modules to all of the assemblers here. Like the utility science, I recommend that you set up one speed module and three productivity modules. This gives you, will give you a slight speed increase, but more importantly, it'll give you 30% additional free items. And this is the last of the science builds. I'll also cover some of the science labs designed and how I propose to build it. I'm using belt weaving for my design and you can see here there are red undergrounds that connect and then there are yellow undergrounds that connect as well. Yellow and red undergrounds are on separate systems so you can have the yellow go under the red and thereby you can actually have four belts fitting into two belts in this manner. This is what it does so that we have seven inputs and one half belt empty and they can, each and every one can pick up from this location. I'm also doing the daisy chain, which means that one science lab is inputting into the next science lab. You can do this as many times as you like. You can just add more rows. 
However, I do not recommend it. As you can see, what happens is it actually spends quite a bit of time just shuffling things through. So my proposed and recommended is to make a nice compact design with only sort of one level of daisy chaining. But that's totally up to you as well. Now, in terms of how many science labs you need, well, I have, uh, in this case, built 36. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. You could build more if you like, you can build less. If you build more, then they are probably going to be idle a lot of the time. But on the other hand, you don't want to build exactly to a production because there might be times when you want to slow down the science or one of the products needed for one of the sciences is running out. So you are unable to produce that one science. For example, you don't have enough red circuits, for example, or blue circuits. And therefore, you might want to allow the other ones to stockpile so that when it comes in, you can have more labs kicking back into gear or you simply forget or choose not to start the next research. Now, when it comes to science labs, I would highly recommend that you always put productivity modules. As soon as you have even the first productivity modules, put them in here. Yes, it will slow them down and it will use a bit more power. However, science is your most expensive product and getting free extra products of your most expensive product is a very good deal. Likewise, as soon as you can, upgrade it, but be careful not to upgrade the bus as well, the belts, because if you upgrade the belts, then they will no longer be belt weaving. If you want to, for whatever reason, add more, it is high, it's tileable and you can easily add more science labs if you feel like it. All the science builds are designed towards 1.5 per second or 90 per minute. So you may, you may wonder how, is that enough for our base? Well, I think this is enough for a base that is supposed to launch rockets and build the future base if you want to scale up to a much larger base like a 1000 science per minute base this is not going to be it but this is the base that builds the base so it'll have a continuous steady throughput of science and various other products that you can then proceed with i've done some calculations on the time it takes to research every item using this build now since this is an entire playthrough there will be stages of it and i will do that from the unlocking of the utility science because that's when you have everything unlocked from the time that you have unlocked utility until you have researched all of the utility science that is not a repeatable science that means we are unlocking atomic bombs but we are not unlocking flamer damage six that will take two and a half hours if you want every single utility science unlocked it'll take four hours of constant production now, I don't think that's unreasonable from the time that you are, from the time that you unlock the yellow science. Remember, you unlock yellow science before you unlock production science. On top of that, there are some products, some sciences that require only production science, but do not require any utility science. That will take an additional 45 minutes to get all those unlocked. That includes breaking speed in all of its tiers. I think that for most players playing the game, from the time that you unlock your yellow science, you will definitely have more than five hours left of the game so this science build will keep you happy and well-fed in terms of science until you launch the rocket and start scaling up to a bigger base. But that is a completely different topic from this tutorial. With regards to these builds, you can also add modules to them. And I highly recommend adding modules if you want to do that at some point. This brings us to the end of the guide on how to build science leading up to the first rocket launch. If you like the video, I hope that you will hit the like button. And also, if you want to see more content like this, I hope that I have earned your subscription and you'll be checking back for more builds like this in the future. If you have comments, feedbacks or ideas for upcoming videos, hit the comment section below. And also, you're welcome to join the Discord and continue the discussion over there. If you want to be part of upcoming design workshops, then these are streamed over on Twitch TV slash Nilaus. It happens on Mondays at 8 p.m. Central European time. For more factorial content, I'm also streaming a Let's Play over on Twitch. That's Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, also at 8 p.m. Central European time. So do check that out as well. Thank you very much for watching. As always, stay effective.